Today's conversation is going to be about roommates, okay? When we talk about what a roommate is and how a roommate goes about his life, it's somebody who shares a common space. So it's about sharing initially. What I believe firmly is that we grew up in this community understanding what sharing is, but within our own context. So for example, <clears throat> back in the 80s, I'm from the 80s, back in the 80s, the first things we shared was the airwaves, was the entertainment industry. We grew up as kids and we shared El Chavo del Ocho and shows from Mexico. But locally, specifically uh, those of us who were more on the eastern part of the city, we grew up and we got KPBS, right? We saw Reading Rainbow and LeBar Burton. We saw Mr. Rogers who taught us how to wear a cardigan. And everybody knows Big Bird. The first thing we've got with this piece of sharing was to understand. What did we understand at the beginning? We understood words first. We started understanding words from another language. Then came sentences. And eventually, words, sentences, became complete culture appropriation. So we understood what it meant to be a kid in San Diego, right? We understood what it meant to grow up, read a book, obviously go out, play, as if we were part of that same community. Y cuando nosotros estábamos de jóvenes creciendo también en esta comunidad, nuestra segunda interacción principal era con nuestra región. Era saliendo, era paseando, era viajando. Tenemos una frontera de los que se acuerdan de ella que podemos caminar y transitar libremente. Venían nuestros amigos, venían nuestras visitas de Estados Unidos y venían a Ensenada a la bufadora. Venían a San Felipe de vacaciones en Semana Santa y se iban a acampar. Y nosotros, nosotros cruzábamos en la mañana y nos íbamos con nuestros papás a hacer compras, a pasear. Es un, para mí un recuerdo muy grato que mi papá me llevaba y en Chulavista había un cine que ya no está ahí pero me llevaba a mí al cine lo que mis mamá y mi abuelita hacían compras y de ahí nos íbamos a comer hamburguesas al lado al Fud Rackers y nos íbamos al parque a jugar. Y era parte de mi día a día. Para mí la frontera como tal no era un lugar donde yo me detenía, era algo que incluías en tu parte de tu commute, poder cruzar la frontera. Entonces, <coughs> realmente si nos ponemos a pensar, lo que yo compartí en ese momento y lo que empecé a aprender fue a respetar a esa comunidad, a respetar que yo me enamoré de esos lugares y que yo quería ir seguido a ellos y que eran parte de mi día a día. Nosotros a veces no tomábamos en cuenta como niños esa diferencia que había de dos países. Simplemente cruzábamos la frontera y llegábamos a donde queríamos ir. The face of our border has changed recently. So, the reason the face of our border has changed is for many reasons, right? The first reason is technology that helps us get people, goods, services across easier, but also because of security, right? I mean, we've all seen the news. If it's tunnels, ladders, and drones, oh my, people find a way to get things over the border, right? Be them legal or not. But for those, of us who do, for those of us who do it legally, for those of us who do it every day and do it for business, it gains a new type of context. For example, when we share this border and we share our community, the second thing I started to learn about respect is the people who do this border. So if you see the image, you, feel, you see on the top left corner, you see the people, the cars, right? There's 170,000 of us daily who cross. And I'm talking about myself because I do it on a daily basis. So if you take the cars away, if you take every single car away, what's left? You've got teachers, you've got nurses, you've got doctors, engineers, students crossing the border. You've got people who every day sacrifice two hours of their life in the commute to go and serve the community in San Diego to provide a better life for their families in Mexico. Anybody who initially starts off their day with a two or three hour commute I can respect that. But that's part of our day-to-day -day lives. Many people in other parts of the world don't understand that. When you look at the border and you see the community, you see people shopping there. You see people having breakfast, reading the news, kids doing homework, somebody taking a power nap, somebody, women getting their makeup on. You see so many women getting their makeup on in the morning in the border. It's just ridiculous. Cuando avanzamos y ya somos jóvenes empresarios, jóvenes profesionistas, jóvenes emprendedores que traemos esta región, ¿qué es lo siguiente que compartimos? Compartimos las oportunidades de hacer negocio. Para hacer negocio de ambos lados de la frontera, lo que primero necesitamos es nuestra contraparte que nos va a ayudar del otro lado. Los que trabajamos en este ámbito binacional, los que somos abogados, los que somos contadores, los que somos ingenieros, los que somos cualquier tipo de profesión, profesión un comerciante, alguien como mi cuñado que instala estéreos, y es un excelente empresario, depende de los dos lados. Encuentra en sí que tiene que generar esa relación. Y nos damos cuenta que sin apoyarnos de alguien del otro lado, ya sea del norte a sur o sur a norte, no lo vamos a lograr.
¿Y qué pasa cuando empezamos a entender de ese apoyo? Empezamos a apoyar todo lo local. Empezamos a apoyar nuestros restaurantes, nuestros chefs, nuestros equipos. Yo soy de Tijuana y yo le voy a los Chargers como le voy a los Cholos. Le voy a los padres como le voy a los toros, les voy a mis sonkis. Es mi equipo local, es la gente de aquí lo que nosotros apoyamos. Y entre nosotros a veces nos podemos quejar que nuestros equipos nos hacen un poquito difícil apoyarlos a veces, pero que nadie venga de fuera a decirnos algo de nuestros equipos porque nos quejamos. Ese apoyo es algo sustancial que nos permite desarrollarnos localmente y nos permite claramente tener éxito localmente. When we talk about the roommate agreement, Yes, I'm making reference to a TV show called The Big Bang Theory. So everybody knows Leonard and Sheldon, and what you're seeing right now is that specific moment when they meet for the first time and Sheldon comes out with a roommate agreement. It's this thick, and it starts explaining multiple rules, and the rules are so crazy and colorful and weird and lovely, and they've got a robot rule, and they've got a Godzilla rule, and a dairy rule. My favorite rule is a time travel rule. They say, at that episode, that if they find a way to travel in time, they will travel back to that exact moment and then greet themselves again. So they pause for a second, they look around, and they're like super disappointed. It's like, okay, let's check that off the list. <laughs> Not as different from San Diego and Tijuana, I can compare us to Leonard and Sheldon. Brilliant, unique, really weird sometimes to each other, and socially awkward. We understand each other and we can work together, but when we talk about getting together with other parts of the country, that's where it gets a little bit sticky, right? We are socially impaired. We know how do things work here. So, why a roommate and not a neighbor? Because you hear both terms, roommates and neighbors, right? Uh, a neighbor and my wife, who's here, can attest that we've lived both sides of the border and we've lived in multiple places and we have all types of neighbors, right? So you got really good neighbors that you find a way to uh, make things work, but sometimes, That's there's a neighbor that you just can't stand. So when you get a really weird neighbor or somebody you can't really work with, you've got two options as far as I see. You can either move and leave, but I can't pick up Baja California and just drop it like somewhere in the Middle East, right? Your second option and the one that's a go-to, you build a wall. And I've known we've been having a lot of wall conversations recently. So my wall, the one that they talk about is a border, but I don't go to my wall and feel that I get stopped at the border, like a wall within neighbors. A wall within neighbors is to keep people out and keep stuff in, right? I'm going to my border to get admitted, not to get stopped at, okay? So as roommates, we all have our room, we have our privacy, we sleep in separate bedrooms, but once we walk out the door, everything else is shared, right? We share the living room, we share the closet, we share the TV, and yes, we fight over that seat and the sofa, that's fine. But Once we understand that since we were young, we get the opportunity to understand ourselves, respect ourselves, and support ourselves. That's really the way to have success. Now, why to me this is important? As neighbors and as roommates, whichever you choose, as long as you understand it, to me with my roommate, if we can sit down and have the right conversations, if we can sit down and build the right relationships, we are the people who are going to tell our own stories. We're going to tell our stories of success, of understanding each other, our stories of success, of respecting each other, and our stories of success, of supporting each other. And we can be a model. We can be an example for other border parts in the world that go through something so similar to us, but we've got it figured out. Okay? So that's my main takeaway. So, um, by the way, if you didn't understand half of what I said, you're probably not from around here. Thank you very much. <laughs>